The Detroit Debates. America feels the burn. All right, so the July debates kicked off last night with night one. And uh, I have my notes here. I've got a bunch of notes I'm just going to go over. It'll be somewhat of a light review, just give you my commentary and my opinions and feedback about a few things that happened. <laughs> a lot happened. It was a huge debate. It was almost three hours long. Uh, jam-packed. The questions were very, very short, so which means they asked tons of rapid-fire questions. It was a jam-packed night, but I'm going to see what I can dig through here. First of all, like I said, the, the debate format was a joke. Um, candidates were routinely cut off uh, for time reasons. You know, they had 30-second response times. And even though they were in the dead middle of their response, CNN talked over them and cut them off unapologetically. Uh, it came off as really cringy. It came off as just like, oh, this is horrible. It happened so much because politicians in general always talk at length. Um, you know, and that's what we, we want them to talk at length. We don't, what are we doing here? Is CNN just trying to create sound bites? Because we need to hear people talking about policies and solutions and, and we need to hear them talk at length. CNN framed this like they just wanted 30 second sound bites. Okay, it's ridiculous. Horrible format. Just like the June debates, it was totally horrible as far as their format. Okay. Jake Tapper uh, and the rest of the CNN tools uh, used overtly right-wing lanes of questioning throughout the night, the whole night. Not a part of the night, not a section of the night, the whole night. Unapologetically framing questions from a right-wing bias, the whole night. It didn't stop. I don't know how stupid someone has to be to think CNN is a left-wing outlet. Like, you have to be God-tier stupid to believe for one minute, one second, that CNN is a left-wing outlet of any kind. Okay. Uh, grading CNN on their job, I gave them an F-. minus. Dave, an F minus doesn't exist. Somehow it does now. It was that bad. CNN got an F minus. Jake Tapper is a shameless shill like I've never seen before. And you know what? I love when they put the camera on this guy. When they put the camera on this guy and you saw his eyes, you saw a man who is dead inside. Because he knew what he was doing. He knew the disingenuous nature that he had to approach this. And I saw death in his eyes. Death of character. Death of any human redemption. He was completely void. And I'm glad I got to see that. All right. Bernie killed it, like I, I alluded to in the intro. Let's see what Bernie talked about. First of all, a Bernie and Warren, a Bernie versus Warren narrative was being built by CNN. Uh, they really took this uh, adversarial approach that Bernie and Warren were going to duke it out. And, and I speculated about this too. Like I said, okay, well, is Warren going to go after Bernie? They didn't even have a chance to if they wanted to. Bernie and, and Elizabeth Warren were being attacked the whole night from most of the debate stage people. It was, they didn't have a chance to, even if they wanted to. Okay, so anyways, Bernie came out with strong, angry, populist rhetoric, um, and I think it worked this time. In June debates, it rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know why it did, but now that he was backed into a corner, the context of being backed up into a corner really made sense for him to be angry, because they tried to back him up into a corner. So way awesome uh, on the strong, angry, populist rhetoric. Um, he put John Delaney in his place. He put John Hickenlooper in his place. He put Tim Ryan in his place. Bernie was on fire. And, and if you didn't watch it, Bernie was attacked from all of these people. Hickenlooper, Ryan, uh, and Delaney, especially Delaney. He was a Medicare for All attack dog. And 
It just you you don't, you don't put Muhammad Ali, okay, backed up into a corner. He's gonna fight his way out, and he's gonna knock you out. And Bernie did the same thing. They tried to put Bernie in a corner, tried to pin these these right wing narratives on him and his Medicare for all that is too out of the box. It's too much of a big idea, and all this stuff, and Bernie just punched back beautifully. Uh, and he just put all of these people uh, on their backs with knockout blows. It was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, Bernie uh, successfully called out Trump's hatred, his uh, demonization of immigrants, sexism, racism, xenophobia, and his pathological lying. Um... Like I alluded to, he he said Republicans aren't afraid of big ideas. And he was talking about like how Democrats need to be for big ideas. Because big ideas were being criticized. Bernie's big ideas were being criticized. But every time the Republicans have big ideas, everybody's on board. Yeah, but the Democrats can't have big ideas for some reason. Well, too bad. Okay, Bernie also talked about uh, policies such as the 10-20-30 plan, which is a bill by Jim Clyburn for rebuilding poor communities. Uh, Bernie talked about supporting the Thurgood Marshall plan. Uh, you know, Bernie is just all policy substance. That's why I love him, okay? This is why I connect with him, because I care about policy substance. I care about solutions, okay? Um, there, was some, there was one weak spot, foreign policy. He was kind of soft. He talked about the UN and healing wounds with our allies. And it just kind of general and kind of soft, and it didn't really land that much. Um, but that was probably the only soft spot in Bernie's rhetoric the whole night, so not bad at all. Uh, you know, and he, he talked about canceling student debt, Green New Deal, and CNN gave him a lot of time to talk. Understand this. There was a framing, uh, there was a plan to back Bernie Sanders into a corner. Um, and this opened up Bernie to talk a lot more than any other candidates because they really wanted to grill Bernie hard on Medicare for All and frame him as a lunatic and, on, and just all these disingenuous uh, framings. And it only, it just, it screwed them up even more. The more Bernie talked, the more convincing he was, the more on point he was. Like, like I said, you can't back this guy into a corner. He comes out fighting like Muhammad Ali. The guy's a champion. You cannot beat him. You cannot back him into a corner and expect it for him to go down. You can't. Okay, they also framed an age question against him. Very interesting. Uh, they had to bring up his age. He's 77 years old, and they, um, they, they try this, like, I think it's a daily thing for CNN to try this. Uh, but here's, here's my question. Are they going to do this for Joe Biden tonight? Are they going to do this for Joe Biden, who is one year younger than Bernie Sanders. Are they going to bring up the age question? Something tells, tells me, don't count on it. Because, <laughs> bias. All right. So, Bernie won the debate. There's no question about it. There, there's no way anybody could ever convince me otherwise. Uh, Elizabeth Warren came in a close second, because once again, it was Bernie and Warren versus most of the stage. That's just what it was. It was moderates versus the progressives. So, um, Warren did a great job. Uh, she called out a completely rigged system, a, pol a rigged political system, a rigged economic system, uh, pro-Medicare for all rhetoric, uh, green industrial policy talk. Um, she called out white supremacy for what it is, domestic terrorism. I love that. Um, and, and like I said, it was an easy second place for Elizabeth Warren. Uh, so she did pretty darn good. Okay, I'm going to move on to Marianne. Okay, Miriam was almost completely left out of the first half of the debate. They didn't go to her at all for the first half. I swear she might have talked once or twice. They gave her the Yang treatment, okay, from last month. So that was unfortunate. But as she did get to, to speak more, she was nailing it. She had a great night, a great second half, for sure. Uh, she talked about an amoral economic system uh, and how conventional politics will not solve our problems uh, at times. Uh, my complaints were at times she was too philosophical and too general, but she had the crowd cheering a lot. She really had the crowd on her side. Um, she, she spoke like a very strong populist, so her tone was very populist, very for the people, and that just went over well 
when she when she nailed that tone, because I noticed that tone. Um, she called out the NRA for supporting hypocrites, for NRA supporting hypocrites in the Democratic Party. Um, strong rhetoric on Flint, Michigan. She really won the crowd over there. Uh, she won the crowd over on reparations rhetoric. Um, wow. Uh, she, she, I think three times I counted, she said, I'm with Bernie on that. She really tried to line herself up with Bernie Sanders, which makes a lot of sense policy-wise. Um, <clears throat> I don't think, I think she came out against Medicare for All, though. I have to, I have to go over that again. If you know what Marianne said about Medicare for All, leave it down in the comments. Let's talk about that. I want, I, I'm just talking to myself here, like, did I get that wrong? Did she say, did she come out against Medicare for All? She did say something about coming out against wonkiness, like all this wonkiness isn't going to save us and all this stuff. Um, policies are a big part of politics, okay? I understand Marianne has different angles. I understand she has different approaches. But I'm sorry. I am for the wonkiness. I am for policy talk. I am for progressive policies. In, in, in talking about them, and it is a big strategy of changing what needs change uh, structurally within society. These progressive policies, Medicare for All, Fight for 15, UBI, all of these policies, I want to hear the wonkiness. So I don't know why Marianne a couple times alluded to, oh, wonkiness isn't going to save us and all this stuff, and you know she got off track a little bit, but like I said, she had a great night, a great second half, she was my third place. So, these are my top three. Bernie nailed it, number one. Warren, number two. And Marianne, number three. And I have some other additional notes. I don't even want to go over it. Like, these people are just like NPCs to me. They're just like clown shows. John Delaney, Steve Bullock, uh, John Hickenlooper. They're not even worth commenting on. They're just not. They're just filler. They're stage filler. They were all attack dogs for the progressives. It, it sounded like CNN uh, talked to their corporate sponsors, and they talked to Hickenlooper and Tim Ryan and all these other candidates to go after the progressives. So, you know, I'm not going to give them any play on my channel, so screw them. Uh, we'll end the video there. Let me know what you thought about night one of the Detroit debates. Like, share, and subscribe. Click the bell. Let's talk down below.